marriage worth it anymore? That is the question many are asking. They're asking, is it worth getting married? Is marriage still relevant? Now, these are some of the questions many people, and maybe including you, ask themselves, especially in today's world. But the truth is, marriage is still one of the best decisions a person can ever make. And if you've not been married, this is still one of the best decisions you can make. Even when, according to the statistics, 50% end in divorce, that is one out of two marriages. Even in the face of that, marriage is still worth it. And I'm going to show you why I believe marriage is still worth it and why you should know. Now, as of this recording, I have been married for 38 years. And as a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified relationship coach, I have counseled and or coached hundreds of married couples for almost two decades. And some of what I'll be sharing with you stems from my own personal and professional experiences. Now, studies have shown that married people tend to live longer, have better physical and mental health, and have more financial stability than unmarried people. Marriage also provides emotional support, companionship, and, and spiritual growth that can of the fact you have that support, you have that person who is on the same page with you pulling in a similar direction. So in this video, we'll discuss all the benefits of marriage, both practical and spiritual. Now, when I say all, of course, there's, I won't cover, be able to cover every aspect of that because there are things that obviously it would take me a whole day and, and more to address, but we'll cover as much as possible and the most important ones. We'll also talk about the biblical aspect of marriage and how it can help us to grow in our faith, us, help us meaning how marriage can help us to grow in our faith. Now, if this is the first time you're watching and listening to me, let me say thank you for joining me here. If you've been here before, again, thank you for returning. I want you to have fun, but also get as much helpful information as possible. And by the way, my name is Kingsley Grant from Happier Marriage Secrets, where we are making marriages happier again, just in case you did not know or wanted to know who I, I was in making this video. Now, if you're considering getting married, or if you have already been married, and you want to learn more about the benefits and why you can also, if you've been married, speak up and stand firm and strong and not having to in any way seemingly kind of, you know, back down, shy away from this topic of why marriage is important and why it's still worth it today. Then this video is for you. I want to share with you six reasons why I believe marriage is still worth it. Six reasons. So let's start off with the first one. Now, this could be in any order. So it's not in any particular order, but they are going to be helpful to you. The first one I want to mention is why marriage is still worth it because of the longevity of life. Longevity. Studies have shown that married people live longer than unmarried people. A, a 2018 study found that married people had a 15% lower risk of death than unmarried people. For a number of reasons, when you take that study apart, you'll see it, it, it makes a case for what it is about married people, why they will live longer. The rate is 15% lower. It's one of the reasons why I believe that if you want to live longer, 
Well, get married. Of course, there's a lot, a lot goes into getting married. So it's not just getting up tomorrow and get married because you want to live longer. There are other things, of course, that goes into that must be factored in. So longevity is the first reason why I believe it is marriage is still worth it. The second reason, physical and mental health. Physical and mental health. Married people tend to have better physical and, and mental health than unmarried people. Say, Kingsley, where did you get that from? Well, a 2019 study found that married people were less, check this out, were less likely depressed, less likely anxious, and less likely to have substance abuse problems. Because the it makes sense, right? You feel you have a responsibility. There is accountability. There is someone who can help you to walk through some issues you're going through, supporting you. I mean, a number of things, the list goes on and on why that does make sense, right? So physical and mental health for married people is better off than for unmarried people. The question doesn't, it doesn't mean that married people doesn't have mental issues. I mean, physical and mental health issues. Obviously they do. You know, one of the reasons why I mentioned earlier that as a licensed marriage and family therapist, my business is primarily to help married people. Of course, I work with individuals and, you know, non-married as well. But primarily, I work with a lot of married couples. And the reason why they come to me because they're having issues that are, you know, stressors or anxiety or depression within their marriage for a number of reasons, right? So it doesn't mean they're exempt from that, but it simply means on a whole, right, they have better physical and mental health than unmarried people. The third reason, financial well-being, financial well-being. Married couples tend to have more financial stability than unmarried people. And that kind of makes sense just on the surface if you think about it, right? A 2020 study found that married couples had a higher median net worth than unmarried people. Obviously, because you have two people who are bringing an income, if both people are working and bringing, you know, bringing in some substantial income, they're going to be better off financially than a one-person income a household, which so that makes sense. And of course, because of the, the, the going back to the idea of accountability, the sense of responsibility, the sense of just wanting to be able to provide better for their family would mean that they're going to be approaching it from a more, you know, fiscal, being fiscally responsibility, responsible than sometimes an unmarried person who doesn't think they have any responsibility. So that makes sense as well, why financially, married people does better, uh, do better than unmarried people, right? That makes sense. The fourth reason is emotional support, emotional support. Marriage provides a level of emotional support that is unmatched by any other relationship. When you're married, you have someone to always be there for you no matter what. Now we're speaking on all things being equal, meaning that both both individuals are fully committed to the marriage. See, this is what a people people who are just in a relationship where they're just living together will not have because the part that's missing is this one part. They're in a committed, when they're married, they're in a committed relationship. Even though the unmarried may say we are committed to one another, there is still an open door, a clause that says, if it doesn't work out, we can just be out of here and go about our very, our, our merry way and don't really care, right? Where you're married, you're committed and you are in a covenant relationship. Whereas that is not true of just being in a relationship when you're unmarried. I mentioned before married for 38 years. And I can tell you, Having been married and having a wife who is there and her support and the fact that I can have someone to talk to, run ideas by, bounce ideas, she getting to know me, you know, all the nuances of that, it comes with a commitment 
and a sense of oneness, right? We feel like, not feel, we are one. We are one-minded towards certain things. And it doesn't mean that we we don't have our differences. We have our differences. And we are our own independent individual persons. We do have that and maintain that that's important. But we are able to bring emotional support in a way that doesn't happen a person who's unmarried, right? Now, so the first four I've shared so far is longevity, number one. Number two is physical and mental health. Number three, financial well-being. And number four, emotional support. Now, before I share with you the last two reasons why I believe marriage is still worth it in our day we're living in and all the different things that are going on and being said about marriages, it is still worth it. And number five, I think, is really, really huge. I ask you to oblige me for the next uh, few seconds to share this with you. And that is, first, let me ask you to hit that subscribe button. And I really appreciate you doing that. Hit that subscribe button. It's one of the, the ways that this channel will have a broader reach. And also, and let me know that this is bringing great value to you. If you're liking what you're hearing, of course, hit that like button as well. If you um, would like to get a free PDF, which is a short ebook of the five mistakes that are actually killing marriages, then go to Happier marriage secrets.com happier marriage secrets.com slash mistakes happier marriage secrets.com slash mistakes and get your own free copy the link will also be provided in the description that follows this video thirdly i want to, to let you know i have a podcast if you're into podcast it's called the happier marriage secrets podcast where you can access a number of topics that i have talked about as it pertains to marriage and you can hear interviews and solo shows I've done at Happier Marriage Secrets podcast. And you can have access to that, happiermarriagesecrets.com slash podcast. You'll have access to all those free resources. And lastly, this channel is being sponsored by kinsergrant.com, where you'll find helpful resources that will help to make marriages or your marriage happier again. So what are the last two reasons why I believe marriage is worth it and why you need to know? The number five, number five, and I said it's a very important one, companionship, companionship. Marriage offers companionship like nothing, no, no other relationship does, right? When you're married, you have someone to share your life with together. So everything is put in that one pot. So you're sharing your life with that person financially, relationally, spiritually, you know, you name it, it's all there. Someone to laugh with and someone to cry with, someone to be vulnerable, someone who knows you when you're high and in your highs and your lows, not when you're high, right? In your highs and your lows and you're in between. Where else do you find that than in a marital relationship? So companionship offers you that opportunity to really um, build on a togetherness in your dreams and your aspirations and so on. Number six, spiritual growth, spiritual growth. So like, I'm not a spiritual person. Yes, you are. You may not think you are, but you are in many more ways than, than not, than even if you don't think about it that way. Some people will say, you know, they're into um, new age movement or this you know, the, uh, even the metaphysical or all those different things. That's spiritual in nature. You may not call that it, but it, it is spiritual. So when I'm speaking about spiritual, though, it's something different. Because a marriage can have a sort of spiritual growth. When you're married, you have someone to help you grow in your faith and to support you on your spiritual journey. You know, the Bible speaks about we provoke one another onto spiritual growth. We, we also, it says where two and three have come together in his name, it allows him, you know, it brings that faith component where it says God hears that because you're bringing in two voices per se, rather than just one. It doesn't mean God doesn't hear that single voice. Of course he does, but it allows you to have a, a strengthened positioning that you get because you're both on the same page together. When my wife and I are praying about some matters that has to do with our family, ourselves, our health, our finances. I remember in, you know, of course, you know, the big 
COVID era where things were shutting down and things were really, really bad. We had to hit our knees be more than we have ever done. We've done it in a, we've done that throughout the years, but more than ever. And of course, we've had other situations where we have done that together when we have had, I've had my own open heart surgery. We prayed about that together. And during COVID, our finances was, was really wrecked. And we prayed and believed God together. Our faith grew. But why? We could agree together. We know where we, we were. We could support one another, held, hold one another up. But prayer was very vital for us. So marriage is also a reflection of, in a spiritual aspect of things, a, a relationship between Christ and the church, right? In the Bible, Ephesians, the Bible said in Ephesians, when a couple is married, they are committed to love and serve each other for life, just as Christ loves the church. So it really allows you to have a, a dimension that nothing else does. And so when I speak about marriage and spiritual growth, this is the level that can be accomplished where God blesses. God only blesses marriage where a man and a woman comes together. That's the only marriage he blesses because that's what his word says. And he, he uh, honors because he instituted that. So when you are married and you're focused upon your relationship from a spiritual aspect, and it's in line with God's word, you are, can count on being blessed because God promised that he will bless that union. So marriage allows you then to grow spiritually. And we have a partner uh, in marriage, or a husband or a wife, that will help us to, to, to make it through difficult times. I mentioned to COVID, my own health issues, my wife's health issues. It allows us to wrestle through that and pull together our faith peace, which is so important to marriage. And that is to being able to walk in the forgiveness of each other. You know, the Bible teaches us that we should forgive others just as Christ has forgiven us. That kind of forgiving and forgiveness can only be had because we understand what it means to be forgiven by God. And so we can offer that forgiveness to one another. And that is so important for longevity of our marriages. So it's important to understand marriage is still worth it, but there are some things that's important for you to know and why you should know that is having a marriage founded upon the word of God, founded upon Christ himself, then that makes brings your marriage even to a higher dimension, a higher level than just any other marriage does. A spiritual connection with God allows us to forgive our spouse much easier and um, be able to experience forgiveness ourselves. So if you're struggling with forgiving your spouse or you're thinking about getting married and all the different nuances, if something happens, well, God will give you the grace to forgive and you can seek God's help in the process. So what are the six reasons that I'm sharing with you here? First, longevity. Second, physical and mental health reason. Third, financial well-being. Fourth, emotional support, five, companionship, and six, spiritual growth. These six reasons of the many other reasons out there, I believe are so important to why I believe marriage is worth it. Based upon the merits of what I've just shared, you cannot, no one can argue that those are not beneficial things that any person in their right mind would seek. Now, here's what I want to wrap it up with. Marriage is a big decision. Is not something that you enter into lightly. I love telling couples this many times. I said, guys, this is not a, a, a light decision. It's not something you hurry up and enter into. You must be thoughtful. You must be prayerful. You must really understand this is a marriage for life. Fortunately, our world today make allowance for any reason to, to have a divorce. But marriage, based upon what God says, is one for life. Marriage, people tend to live longer, have better physical and mental health, I mentioned earlier, and have more financial stability than unmarried people. It provides also emotional support, companionship, and spiritual growth. Which of these things do you believe that you are will help you to convince you about marriage? If you've been married, which of these uh, thoughts or ideas just kind of kind of on their you know support and can, can you know come come as a a plus for you to think 
of uh, how happy you are that you are in the marriage world. If you're considering getting married, I urge you to do so. Marriage is a wonderful gift from God, and it can be a source of great joy and blessing in your life. Now, all the links I mentioned today will be found in this description below. So if you miss them, you can always find the links there. With that said, I want to say thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can get notified of all the new videos posted on this channel. And please engage with this channel by leaving a comment below. Any comments? I just, just make a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. I would really appreciate this and share this with at least one other person. I hope you enjoyed this video, which I think you did. And I see you on the next video. God bless. And I see you then.